Hello and welcome to episode 4 in my series How to Play the Cantala. In the first three episodes we talked about more of the technical aspects of playing and so now we're going to talk about more of the creative aspects uh, including improvising. It's said that historically cantala players could play for hours improvising over, you know, one or two themes in a kind of a meditative state. And so the field collectors would write down, you know, basically the main melody and maybe a few improvisations. What makes improvising on the cantala interesting is that the cantala is a very resonant instrument, so a single note can ring out for a very long time. So an improvisation is more than just a series of notes, but rather the interplay in between the notes that you're playing in a horizontal sense. To hear what this sounds like, just pick up your instrument and just play the notes D, E, F, G, and A. And I'm in D minor here. And just picture the sound of wind chimes on a light breeze. And so you'll begin to hear the different harmonies come out. There'll be close seconds and the characteristic sort of suspended seconds and suspended fourths, along with some perfect fists thrown in there as well. After a while of playing like this, you'll start to notice your own musical tendencies coming out. For me, I notice like a strong rhythmic pulse coming out, so I'll exaggerate it like this. random improvisation becomes boring after about 10 seconds, so once you notice those ideas starting to form, you can focus on them to really bring them out. One concept that you can use to bring out your musical ideas is the idea of heterophony, which is found throughout folk music in general, but I learned about it in the context of Karelian singing. Heterophony can be thought of as two or more voices that are uh, simultaneously creating improvised melodies, and so there's no leader or follower, it's just kind of two voices at once, uh, always searching for a melody, and th there are inadvertent harmonies that are created through this same interplay. Of course, in solo cantala playing, you're just the one person, you don't have two voices. So instead what I like to do is allow the interplay between the focused aspects of your improvisation versus the uncontrolled, unintentional aspects. It's always important to have, you know, a focused direction to your improvisations, but then at the same time allow yourself to be influenced and take your cues from the unintentional harmonies that your uncontrolled, unfocused playing will create. So in this example, I'll focus my melodic improvisation on the strong beats while allowing my fingers to play uncontrolled on the weak beats, and then after a while those two aspects will begin to inform each other. Next we'll move to improvised chord playing. It's really difficult to keep that interplay mindset when you're playing chords because now you've introduced some structure into your hand and you have division of labor between your strumming hand and your chord you know, shape hand. And so it's useful to see how you can you know, maintain that uncontrolled freedom into your playing. So hopefully what you can do is you stop seeing your right hand as being solely responsible for rhythm and your left hand as being solely responsible for the chord shape. And so what you can do is allow some of that rhythmic responsibility to your left hand. And then so that way now you'll be able to, to use the interplay of those two voices to direct your improvisation. And also some interesting new rhythms will develop along the way.
So hopefully this gets you thinking about, and more importantly, listening to your instrument in a new way. In the next few months, we'll talk about some new playing styles, some new tunings, so stay tuned for that. But meanwhile, I would really appreciate it if you could support me on Patreon, and I'd like to keep these lessons going even as life returns to normal. Anyway, happy improvising. <laughs>